All right, our final step is to um, let's go ahead and model the spout here, or whatever this is, the spout of a tea kettle type of thingy, genie bottle, whatever. All right, um, basically that looks like uh, like a trunk of an elephant, or uh, how about a uh, you know, it's basically, wow, think of it as like a dinosaur neck too. So think of all these different things that it looks like and what kind of shape it is. So um, I'm actually going to use a cylinder. So Imagine if you were to do a dinosaur, you probably might want to handle a certain situation of it that looks like, you know, well, with this technique here. Anyways, I don't know if that made any sense, but you'll see. All right, so we're going to go and take a cylinder. Uh, I'm just going to lay down a simple cylinder. Not too high, so I'm going to Z up on that so you can see. This is uh, too dense for me, so I'm going to go eight sides, right? And then we're going to go, you know what, technically we only need one height right now. So, and then I'm probably going to, um, you know, just convert that to a poly. And then I can grab these verts and just um, bring them down. I'm going to go something like that. All right, with that now, I'm going to actually um, move this. I'm going to scale it up with my scale tool. Something like that. I'm actually going to rotate it slightly. And we're going to position this about right there. I'm going to hit Z so I know where exactly we are in the world. I know i got to move this back now to match up the front. So I'm in my top viewport. I'm just kind of centering that up. And you know what? Um, we're going to bring this slightly back. And I'm going to tuck this in. We can always reposition the backwards. All right, now from here, we're gonna start. Uh, we're gonna start building onto this. So I'm gonna go ahead and take my polygon here. I'm gonna delete that. You know what? And uh, I'm gonna hide unselected. So I'm just working on that face, and then I'm gonna delete that. All right, so now we can start taking these vertexes, and we're gonna match this up a bit. Um, I guess we can actually, um, you know, I can grab the first V right here. Maybe scale them down slightly. Maybe I want to scale these up. It's not that big of a deal. I'm just shaping it up a little bit better. And like I said, we can actually, um, you know, we're just going to go ahead and shift drag it. But I'm going to actually take these first few and rotate them slightly like that. All right, let's take our border, just like we were doing the spouts. You know, got the front here. And I'm going to use my shift drag technique. So we want to do the bulk. So I'm just going to shift drag. About right there, I'm going to rotate it. You know, at the same time, I can kind of skew this in a bit. And, you know, like I said, don't worry about this. We'll, we'll add more detail for that later. So I'm going to go ahead and, um, you know, I'll rotate this to match right about here. And, you know what, I'm probably going to scale that in slightly. All right, now I'm going to go ahead and uh, shift drag and walk all the way up here at the same time. I'm going to scale that in and taper it. I want to rotate this. And like I said, if you're used to your hotkeys now, go ahead and start using them. So I'm going to go shift, rotating this, and I'm, plus I want to scale it in a bit. Then I'm going to hold shift down again. But this time I'm going to rotate it this way. And I want to move this and just match this up right here and scale it out. So if you're seeing it, I'm scaling this out slightly to match somewhat the width. All right, now let's go ahead and get our details in now. So I'm going to start taking my vertexes here. We're going to shape this out a bit. Now let's come down here. All right, let's go ahead and start um, add more geometry. So I'm going to take my edges. I'm just highlighting through. Connect. All right. And I'm going to press OK. And we can bring these down slightly. And there's nothing wrong with actually just getting a few verts, not all of them, and just kind of bringing them down. And then I can grab that one and shape that out a bit. You know, maybe bring that and then this one can slightly go up or maybe down 
and then uh, you know of course I can um, you know, we can grab some of these and you know just kind of tweak it out a little bit and like I said we can actually uh, even just add another cut too if I wanted so I can take this edge ring it connect and then with that you know I'm gonna go ahead and um, probably just pull that out slightly we're gonna shape this up just a bit and like I said sometimes just adding a turbo smooth on here may fix everything without having to add those extra um, cuts alright so I'm just gonna spread these out we may eventually get rid of some of those edges that we added alright so um, oh you know what let's go here and tuck that in about like that all right now um, I'm gonna come over here let's grab these edges connect press ok and I'm gonna actually uh, tuck that back a little bit and then we can probably do these right here so I can grab an edge ring connect press ok and I'm gonna tuck that back slightly and then right here I'm gonna grab straight through connect press ok and then I can scale that in slightly and probably push them back I'm moving back notice I'm grabbing the, the yellow area alright last thing I'm gonna do is um, right here the spout. You know what? Before we do that, let's go ahead and test our turbo smooth out. So I'm gonna drop a turbo smooth, crank it up to ice line displays, and let's see how it's shaping out. All right, looks pretty good. You know, we can actually click on this if we need to fatten it up a little bit. So I can go to my vertex, uh, scale to or whatever, showing results here, and then we can actually grab some of these in smooth form and just pull out what we need to certain verts to um, shape it out a little bit better at least to know that we're fitting the width of it by the actual drawing remember when you put a turbo smooth things tend to shrink so we can start grabbing these and we're working in smooth form and I'm just kind of positioning them up which you know everything looks pretty good alright let's add some details now I'm gonna go ahead and turn that turbo smooth off and turn my showing results off. We're gonna grab our border. It's an opening right here. Now, if you use your scale tool, hold down Shift with my border selected, and I'm in the center yellow. I'm gonna shift that in slightly to duplicate that edge. I'm letting go, and then I'm gonna go into my front viewport, and I'm gonna shift drag again, bring it back. But I'm gonna scale it in so it's not overlapping slightly, just like that, to give the illusion that we. Have some we don't have to build the whole thing you're never probably gonna see down in there all right so now we got that now if I try my turbo smooth it looks pretty good but I want to chamfer some edges now so what I'm gonna do is actually handle this part right here so I'm gonna take this edge ring it instead of chamfering it I'm going to um, let's see I guess we could chamfer it I'm gonna take that edge and this edge loop them and then just chamfer them but don't overlap you don't want that happening you want to slightly split the edge a little bit just like that maybe a little more oops uh, let me cancel looks like I deselected something so I'm gonna loop loop those chamfer that's about right I can go a little bit higher maybe like that and then press OK splitting that edge right there basically uh, kinda smooth that out on top looks pretty good now the last step uh, maybe I want to add a slightly another detail to it I'm actually gonna take um, these polys here you know and I'm gonna add a, in a slight extrude but on not group I'm gonna change it to local and you know I want to raise it up slightly alright from there I'm going to chamfer these edges too or you know sometimes you don't have to chamfer everything I can take this edge ring it connect but I'm going to slide this 
segment really close to this edge. It's almost like chamfering. And then I'm going to take this one, ring, connect, and it should know to be very close to the opposite end. Let me space that out a bit. All right. And then we can do it right here as well on these two opposite ends. So this way, this is a little slightly different from chamfering because we're not splitting that edge on top. So I'm going to ring it. Oops, let me make sure I'm on that right edge. I don't know why it's not letting me grab that edge. So ring it. Hmm. These like this. Something's acting really crazy here. Let me grab this edge right here. There we go. Ring. Connect. And I'm going to slide this one this way. And then one more. Ring. Connect. And it knows to be on the opposite side. So I'm going to go right here. All right. That looks like it should be done now. Um. You know, everything looks fine. You know what? Um, I'm going to go ahead and grab these. You know, technically we don't even need that back end. I'm going to grab that border and just delete that face because we don't need it there. All right, I'm going to turn my turbo smooth on. All right, looks pretty good. I'm going to unhide everything. And you know what? Let's go ahead and um, I'm going to highlight everything here. Uh, drop a gray shader on it. And then I'm going to change my black my lines to black lines. And there we go. Looks pretty good. Last thing, uh, I'm going to hit my F4 so we don't see our edges. Uh, let's go ahead and give ourselves an ambient occlusion render. So I'm going to lay down a plane. And always lay down a plane on the ground when you're doing these. So i got a plane here. I'm going to scale that up a bit. And make sure you only have, if I throw my edges back on F4, you know, you only need one length segment, one height for the plane. You know what, I'm just going to actually um, move this plane down right under here. And then I'm going to make sure my all my uh, geometry, these guys, feel free to, like, this middle base, I'm grouping it. So notice I'm uh, highlighting these. So I got the, the spout, the handle, and the body. And I'm going to go group. And then we'll call this whatever base three, so I can move them all together at once. I'm gonna line it up there at the you know on the plane, and then I'm gonna bring this one down to match. There we go. So now if we have um, you know if you want to click one of these, hold down shift, and you know duplicate some bases around, feel free to do so. That's up to you resize them if you like all right that looks pretty good I just whoops don't want I don't want that all right so I got some bases and you know what? I'm gonna grab my plane here and just scale it out really big now uh, what I'd like for you to do is uh, give me an ambient occlusion render so I already have one set up and if you need to remember how to do it please watch the video on how to render and set up your ambient occlusion I'm going to go ahead and drop a gray shader back on here. And I'm going to go to render setup. Uh, we want to make sure that we are in assign render, which is mental ray. All right, next thing I'm going to hit my M key, pick a blank shader. We're going to change this to a mental ray shader. All right, in the surface slot, I am going. Uh, ambient occlusion, so AM. Uh, let's see, ambient, it's right here. Uh, I'm going to change this to 128 instead of our normal 64. And we're going to change our max distance to 0, 0, 0.0. All right, go to your parent level. Let's name this uh, dirt or ambient. I'm going to go to my processing tab, check material override. I'm going to drag that right on there, instant it, go back to my uh, renderer tab, we're going on one, and you know what, let's, we can go, you know, let's keep it at 64, I guess, even though we got that as 128, we're going to go Mitchell, 
and that looks pretty good so I'm gonna go ahead and hit render now I think we got everything set so I'm gonna go ahead and render that out and then like I said once you're done feel free to uh, save it out as a JPEG and post it up in the farms there we go we got some decent looking vases All right, like I said, save these, uh, post up in the forums, uh, you know, 72 DPI. If you have to go in Photoshop and change it to 72, which I'm sure it is. Anyways, I hope you learned something, and so thanks for watching. And like I said, your spline tools are a very powerful technique. Uh, you'll use them many different ways. Uh, and like I said, I'll have some new videos up that will show you different ways you can use them. All right, uh, thank, once again, thanks for watching. Catch you next time.